What's up everybody, this is Halion, and today I'm going to give you my five favorite indie games from 2022. I'm not going to include games that are still in early access as of right now and instead save them for the year that they come out. Sorry, have a nice death in Core Keeper. Alright, let's get straight to it. In Cult of the Lamb, you play as a Lamb of God who needs to create a cult and garner a following in order to appease a Dark Lord who saved you from death. Part town management sim, part action roguelike, Cult of the Lamb offers a lot of charm, style, and uniqueness for a reasonable price. You'll sacrifice, resurrect, feed, and starve your followers in order to achieve greatness. Also, there's always going to be that one jerk who betrays you and tells the rest of the followers how much you suck. I'll be honest, when I first completed my playthrough of the game, I actually felt kind of disappointed because the game was touted as a roguelike, but the replayability was actually quite low. It earns the roguelike tag because of the procedurally generated dungeons that may have to be repeated if you die, but honestly, those dungeons are probably the one major flaw in the game. The combat just isn't very complex and winds up feeling a bit monotonous by the end. But now, in retrospect, I actually really enjoyed my time with the game and had a lot of fun managing my cult. I had lots of amazing moments in the town, like having one follower ask me to sacrifice another follower who I would then resurrect, only to be told to sacrifice them again. Or constantly having to clean up their poop because they are literally a bunch of animals. You also have mini games like Knuckle Bones and Fishing, the former being a very entertaining, unique dice game that can leave you scratching your head trying to form strategy. So while the combat felt a little lackluster, I think that the rest of the content the game provides is amazing and definitely left me wanting more cult simulations. Stray is an action platformer where you play as an adorable kitty cat who is simply trying to get back to their cat family after falling deep into what I'll describe as New New York. You'll find yourself traversing alleyways, fire escapes, buckets, and more while taking in the beautiful settings they've laid before you. Stray is one of those games that somehow looks and sounds absolutely amazing despite not being from a big budget studio. The settings, theming, designs, they really did everything right when it comes to creating a post-apocalyptic atmosphere. It's not a very complicated or difficult game, but it's definitely an amazing casual experience where you're meant to immerse yourself into the world more than plow through it. I might say that it plays a bit more like a linear point-and-click adventure than an actual platformer with lots of small puzzles and riddles to solve. And while the gameplay isn't very complex, the story they tell requires a bit more thinking. They even leave some details up to interpretation and allow players to come to their own conclusion on what happened underground. This game definitely tugged on my heartstrings at moments and seems to have left a really big impression on lots of players. Vampire Survivors, the survival, roguelike, casino, slot machine. How could it not make the list? In Vampire Survivors, you play as a... survivor of vampires? Okay, so the story is definitely vague if one even exists at all, but this game spawned an entire subgenre of games that are bombarding the Steam store even as we speak. Great games like 20 Minutes Till Dawn and Brotato probably would not exist if it weren't for Vampire Survivors. So what is Vampire Survivors? I would describe it as a semi-auto battler action game. All you have to do is survive on a map for a set period of time by maneuvering around enemies. That's it. There's no attack, there's no dodge button, just moving. But we haven't discussed the most critical part, your character auto attacks, killing enemies around you and collecting experience so that you can level up and select from different upgrades. This is where Vampire Survivors excels. Once you start playing, it's hard to stop because getting those upgrades is so visually satisfying. Let's say you choose to grab the axe weapon. Now suddenly you have this giant axe swinging out of you, slaughtering all enemies in your path. And if you make the right decisions, you'll get more experience, then more upgrades, and then more kills. The game constantly rewards you for every level up by letting you kill more enemies, which lets you get more experience, which lets you... you see where I'm going. Leveling up a weapon often provides some kind of visual stimulation. It doesn't just give you a damage increase, but will instead increase the size, duration, or projectile count in order to let you feel the upgrade. Vampire Survivors managed to come into a genre and stir everything up. The repeat gameplay of trying to figure out what works and what doesn't can be very satisfying even for people not initially interested in the genre. It's also only 5 bucks, and while there's only a set amount of playtime you can get out of the game, it is so worth the price. It's getting very hard to decide what games get these top spots, but I think Rogue Legacy 2 has definitely earned it. Rogue Legacy 2 is an action platformer with an insane amount of content. Ironically, it's actually only loosely a roguelike since when you die, you don't really start over completely like you'd think. There is actually quite a lot of carryover between runs and tons of customization. The best way I can describe it is as a procedurally generated Hall Knight, but your character farts sometimes too. The original Rogue Legacy broke new ground by offering permanent upgrades in a genre where you don't normally get any. Now this has almost become the norm in the roguelike genre. The sequel takes everything that the first game did and makes it bigger, better, and far more diverse. 
And boy, do I mean bigger. There are 15 classes, 18 spells, over 50 character traits, 28 weapons, 78 relics, and more and more. There was so much content in this game that I spent over 200 hours playing and still wasn't even close to maxing out the upgrades or trying out all the weapons. There's also a modular difficulty system that lets you customize how you want to make things harder, similar to the Pact of Punishment in Hades. This huge amount of content might not appeal to the completionist, but you can't argue that you get your money's worth. I feel like I have to mention the story a little too here because I was actually shocked by how thorough and well thought out the lore of the castle was. The game took more of a Hollow Knight or Dark Souls-esque approach where you can choose to learn more about certain characters and objects by going out of your way. It actually gets really deep and hearing the sob story of different bosses can actually leave a big impression. Overall, Rogue Legacy 2 is an amazing sequel with fluid combat and action with an insane amount of content and depth. Buy it now. Before we get to number one, I gotta throw out a few honorable mentions real quick. These are games I really enjoyed but I couldn't quite fit on the list. Nobody Saves the World, a charming top-down action adventure with lots of customizability. Dome Keeper, a chill Steam World dig type roguelike with tons of replayability. And Ravita, an amazing side-scrolling roguelike with great art and music. I still definitely recommend these games, even if they didn't quite make the list. I promise you won't be disappointed if you pick them up. There's no way Tunic wasn't going to be my number one game of the year. This game left a massive impression on me and the people watching me play at the same time, some of them touting it as the best experience they've had watching a game. Tunic is a Zelda meets Dark Souls action adventure with some crazy twists that I promise to not get into here. You see, there's a major issue when discussing Tunic, which is that I can't really tell you what makes it amazing without spoiling what makes it amazing. You'll just have to trust me. Secret paths, cryptic messages, and confusing NPCs are just the tip of the iceberg for Tunic. The feeling of playing Tunic is akin to accidentally stumbling upon an entire secret zone in Dark Souls or solving an obtuse riddle in La Mulana. It is one of the most unique gaming experiences I've ever had in my life and I can't recommend this game to enough people. And I didn't even get to mention the amazing art and sound design in the game yet. Beautiful melodies and landscapes soothe your soul, constantly setting a mood to encourage exploration. This is one of those games where it's actually fun to get lost and just wander around, experiencing the world. I wish I could talk more about the game, but it would only spoil what it has for you, so check it out for yourself. You might not be too impressed by the action and exploration of Tunic at first, but if you stick to it, you'll only be left wanting more, I promise. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and throw a like and a comment down below. If you want more content like this, please consider subscribing as well. If there's a favorite indie game that didn't make my list here, let me know in the comments down below as well. All right. Thanks again. Bye bye.